In this video, I want to talk just a little bit again about spirograph. Now, I have been working with this spirograph for about a week. Um, today is January 30th. And on the 23rd, I had a very um, severe seizure. And over the next couple of days, I was actually glad that I had been working with Spirograph during that because I had held on to my art in some sense. Um, with the type of seizures that I have when you have one, or when I have one, um, it usually takes me a couple of days to recover but I tend to lose abilities with each one and sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't. Uh, for example, a couple of years ago in the middle of making a quilt I all of a sudden couldn't remember how to sew. And it took me about a month or so to really get back where I could look at a quilt and know what I had to do. So it is a severe change in someone's life. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because for about a year and a half, I have been um, making or um, in the process of finishing quilts for veterans. And what I have in common with veterans is PTSD. I had a severe car accident with a very bad head injury about 20 years ago, and it left me with um, all the typical symptoms of PTSD, um, flashbacks, nightmares, um, trouble getting in cars. And it was actually before the military started diagnosing PTSD in soldiers. So for even though they had it probably all the way back, my grandfather was in the Battle of the Bulge, and we think he had it. But it wasn't really diagnosed for soldiers um, until a few years after my car accident. So when it first happened to me, I was very much on my own as far as information, um, counselors or doctors uh, knowing what I had. I went to, I think, three doctors before... It was finally a, a child psychologist who said, I know exactly what you have, and he was right. Um, but in addition, I had a major head injury. Then in 2009, I got hit by lightning. And um, speech, um, a lot of different things were affected. They were afraid my, my one of my lungs isn't quite the same now. So... You know, these things happen. So what I have is similar to a lot of the veterans, and I think that's um, part of why I feel empathy for them, because I, even though it's not battle nightmares or the horrific things that they've been through, the physical symptoms in some ways are similar. But anyway, um, so I had a very bad seizure last week, and I am thankful that I was doing spirograph over the couple of days around the seizure because it enabled me to hold on to some sense of doing artwork. And yet, um, most of the other things that I do, crocheting, knitting, weaving, um, quilting, sewing, hand sewing, in this past week I've been redoing all of them to make sure that I can still do them. And I keep coming back to the spirograph, and that um, for right now, all I need to do are the spirographs. And I've kind of come to a, a personal conclusion with PTSD. I think that each spirograph drawing, you see three or four here, each one of these, even though it's small, and even though it's on, um, these are on archival paper, but as an artist, these are almost considered sketches, if anything. Um, and I've been trying this week to make them more, um, well, I look at them as fine art, so I've either been putting them in little holders for ACEOs, or because these were specific after a seizure, I actually started putting them in a book. 
and these were done on scrap paper, but um, this is the day of the seizure, really. And from there, I've been doing several of them, but almost as therapy as well as artwork. And here's um, another thing to think about is through um, doing the quilts for veterans, I came across a man and his website. He lives out in California. His name is Dominic Murin. And he was, he's considered uh, what is called a maker, someone who makes things to benefit um, society in general, really. And what he had come up with was a production cycle. And he adapted a Singer Featherweight 221 to fit on the back of a bike with a wooden frame, and then he would ride the bike to the farmer's market. The frame would um, fold, unfold. The machine would fit into the frame, and the bike would be a support system, and he could sit there and treadle the featherweight at a farm stand, and he made, um, I think, tote bags out of recycled materials and handed them out to people. And what he was trying to demonstrate was that with reusable, recycled materials, you can be extremely productive. And that stuck in my head, and then when I was faced with homelessness last summer, I, I, I ride my bike a lot because of the car accident, um, and the whole idea of a production cycle seemed perfect. So I went through months of, gee, what can I take with me um, to do the quilting, because at the time I was doing quilts for veterans, and I got down to, it would have to be a Model 20, a uh, small singer Model 20, because of the weight on the bike and where would I put the fabric and I went I did hanky quilts I've I've gone through the whole gamut of how can I reduce everything down as simply as possible and I think what I was doing was taking the wrong thing with me now my father was in the army and I've been doing quilts for veterans to honor his service when I finish all those that I have started and set up as sets, I'll have completed five of them. And yet this seizure happened this week, and I seem to be stuck doing spirographs. And I just realized um, something else that stuck with me after this seizure. It's not only the spirograph, it's the production cycle. And for whatever reason, I am thinking very fast now. So the quilting, I, I did, um, I sewed maybe 20 squares the other day, so I can do all those other things, but they tend to become very frustrating now after this major seizure the other day. So I'm sitting here and I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, why are the spirographs um, seemingly um, not only safe, but productive. And I happen to just be using my calculator. I've been a fine artist for 39 years. I think with the Quilts for Veterans and the production cycle, I was focusing on the wrong thing. The constant in my life that would parallel my father is really me being an artist and not being a quilter. I've been an artist um, all along. Um, since high school, really, at, as far as on a level of submitting things and everything. So it was my artistic thinking that I was bringing into Quilts for Veterans, and it's my artistic thinking that still remains after a major seizure. So I, I figured out I'm at about, I think I'm at about 1,400 drawings or paintings, um, over the past uh, 39 years, which does go all the way back to high school, there was a point where I got very frustrated and I threw a bunch of them away. So maybe 2,000 at the most, um, given what I threw away. But if I do 1,400 paintings, 
divided by 39 euros. It comes out to about 36 paintings a year. Now that's not bad. Um, it means that's what I've been doing. That and that's what I mean about the quilts for veterans. I was bringing the artistic into the quilt. Um, when act in actuality, what I'm used to doing is 36 paintings a year. So what does this have to do with the production cycle? Production. I realized um, this is a vintage spirograph set from the 60s. And this one has um, 18 wheels and three rings. And the possibilities are endless. And I found myself saying the other day um, that this is like my fine art. And I think that's because, depending on the wheels that you use and the rings, you have almost unlimited possibilities for different designs. And that's the same as giving someone a set of oil paints and saying, paint anything you want. I mean, look at all the opportunities with the rings and the... So then um, I came across a travel spirograph set, which is about the size of this book. And in that set, I, I ordered one, but it, it isn't here yet. In that set, the, the one ring is built in to the, the spirograph. And you open it up and you slide sticky notes in there. And it comes with six um, wheels or shapes. And even that, if each wheel or shape has 15 holes in it, that gives you 90 starting points for designs. It's made for kids. It's ages two to um, three to six, I think. Some of them say five to seven. So it's made for kids, and it's made out of plastic. But here's the thing that you can do with it. This is fine art paper, and I've cut up about a uh, hundred of them. If I do five spirograph drawings a day, I will be producing 1,800 drawings a year. And this ties in with PTSD. If any of the veterans or um, anyone with PTSD, if you have living nightmares or waking nightmares, if you have flashbacks, your mind is running at 90 million miles an hour processing all of that all the time. When they prescribe medications, I think the whole idea is to slow the brain down so that you don't have running thoughts and panic and all of that. Well, here's another alternative, spirograph drawings. If I've been producing 36 paintings a year, and yet when I have a major seizure, what the constant seems to be is artwork, and all of a sudden I can quadruple my production with a kid's toy that costs $10, uh, $10 to $15. It's the size of a book. It'll fit on my bike. I have a production cycle. I can put, I was saying, I can put a travel spirograph in a small bag, take it with me, go to a farm stand, go to a park, go anywhere, and explain and describe and display art with people. So one thing that bothered me was that it's done with sticky notes. Um, 50 sheets come with a little travel spirograph, and then one retailer said, you just um, get more paper by buying sticky notes. So that's about the worst way to do a drawing if you plan on keeping I apologize, my camera had run out of memory for a second. Um, and now I forget what I was saying. Oh, the sticky notes. And it's really, um, it's disposable paper. You're using ballpoint pens. Um, it's the lowest way of having archival art. So, and like I said, what I've been doing is using fine art paper and gluing them into a sketchbook 
just for my own sake to keep them because this was it, this happened after a seizure. But now, actually, the the fact that they would be on post-it notes, and I have enough sketchbooks um, right here. I have like five sketchbooks here. If I make, and like I said, my example was just five. If I make five of these a day on post-it notes and stick them in there, I'm still producing art. And if I do five a day, 1800 a year. Now, for any artist, being able to produce 1800 of anything a year is wonderful. And when you are an artist, you need to keep producing. You, you need to, it, it's just part of breathing. You have to keep doing it because it's how you think, it's how you function. Now, the common bridge, and the reason I'm making this video, is the PTSD. I coincidentally have PTSD, which a lot of soldiers have. And I am finding that doing this is a wonderful way to process the thinking that goes along with PTSD. What I'm basically saying is if I buy a bunch of those little travel spirographs and give them to veterans, I am giving them a way to be productive in their thinking. I think that the PTSD, they don't have to be artists. No one has to be an artist to be able to do this. And um, it's all explained. It's very simple. But all of a sudden, you're producing 1,800 of something a year. I mean, you can't get more productive than that. If you worked a 40-hour-a-week job, you know, so if, if the PTSD and the running thoughts and um, all of the flashbacks, uh, the nightmares, if you look at a couple of these, um, because I have active PTSD, I, I don't sleep hardly at all. Um, it's not what people like to talk about or hear because it's not fun. But if this is basically the day of the seizure to me, and I started focusing my energy, all of a sudden, after a couple of days, I ended up with that. That, I think, is an example of PTSD. You have 10 million things going on in your head at the same time. And even though I used um, the wheels and the rings to make this design, it just came out like that. Not very organized, very um, busy. And I think this is really an invaluable tool for telling yourself how you're doing. Now, here's one that's uh, just as dark, but it's a little bit more organized. If you don't always follow the directions and um, do it the way the book tells you, <coughs> excuse me, and you just use it as an expression, um, you just pick up a wheel, and you stick the pen in a hole, and you just go for it and see what you come out with, I think it's a little bit of a reflection on how you're doing with your thinking. But as far as the PTSD, um, someone could sit and do these all day long and their mind would be occupied in a productive manner. So I think after a year and a half or at least a year of looking for a production cycle item, I have other items that are portable and um, easy to teach, easy to talk about, easy to do, but Nothing is as productive as a spirograph. I mean, really, when you think about it. So if anyone out there, if you know a veteran or if you know someone with PTSD, consider buying them a travel spirograph or a design tin spirograph. And I mention those two instead of a big, the bigger set is because the bigger set itself can be a little overwhelming with all the opportunities. Um, but like I said, the travel spirograph comes with six different wheel shapes that go inside a ring that's already built into the thing. 
but it gives you 90, at least 90 starting options for designs, and I think that's enough to start with. Also, it's not that big. It's about um, maybe 4 inches wide by 6 inches tall, so anybody can fit it in their pocket. And I'm thinking of myself. I have a doctor's appointment coming up, and I usually take something with me to sit there because he always runs late. And um, if, in, if I have to wait an hour, which I've had to do before, I could get like 25 or 30 of these done. And then I'm not only controlling the PTSD symptoms, I'm actually producing artwork. And then if you don't if you do want to cut small papers out of art papers and then frame them, give them away, make cards out of them. In other words, this simple tool that first came out in either the late 40s or the 50s, I don't know the first time they came out with it. This one is from um I think 62, but I'm not sure could be 67. This little simple thing that a lot of people probably would walk right by because um, it looks like a busy activity, because it's based on math, it's much more productive than it seems. And I want to add something here. Um, with the quilts for veterans that I've been doing lately, the three that I have um, ready to be Really, I just have to finish the quilting on them and a couple of other things. I have actually been putting together sets of things. Um, they'll get a quilt. Um, I also have a, a Christmas book in there. I have um, a, a, I have two things that are a sense of Christmas. I have a chalkboard so they can write their own thoughts down and then erase them if all of this PTSD stuff is um, uh, troubling to them. The hardest part when you have any kind of issues is to write it down and read it again because it makes it real. And it's easier many times to just process it and get rid of it instead of holding on to it by writing it down. So the chalkboard, um, the Christmas gifts, I have things in there that give them a sense of family. Really, people, any person, keeps all of that within themselves anyway. So in addition to trying to honor a veteran by saying, thank you for your service, here's a gift, what I've been trying to do is saying, say, you're not alone, um, you, you have a sense of family, you have a sense of, of being able to do things, and I really am saying that the spirograph alone, the little travel spirograph, and giving them the ability to draw like this replaces everything I was putting in the kits for a veteran. It doesn't give them a blanket to keep them warm. It doesn't give them pot holders to use. But... Before people can really utilize what you give them, they have to be able to focus their own thinking. The, it's not only to honor veterans. Um, that is the main purpose. But with everything we do for veterans is our hope that they can get themselves together to a point where they're functioning by themselves and walking as tall as we know they are. So if a spirograph can allow them to put all those thoughts and nightmares and everything in a drawing on a sticky note that they can then throw away and then start the next one and throw that away, we're giving them the opportunity to get rid of their baggage and yet still be productive. If I go to a park and there's a couple of homeless guys hanging around and I give them one of these and I sit and talk about it for a few minutes and let them do it. Now, let's say this is a dream and it bothers somebody. Me. Let's say this is a dream about something that bothers me and I don't want to look at it. 
Well, I can put it in my book and I don't have to look at it, or I can put it on a card and mail it to somebody and give it to somebody else as a problem. I mean, there are so many things you can do. And I'm amazed. The only reason I found this out is because I had a seizure, and the only thing I've been able to do consistently for the past week is spirograph. And then when you add in that I have PTSD and similar symptoms to veterans, I really do think that even though it's not creature comforts like a blanket or um, potholders or things like that, the shelter that I've been dealing with, um, they say that major companies do provide much of that stuff to the veterans. So mine were additional to what they already had. This might give them a way to at least control their own nightmares. And my purpose was not only to honor them, but to kind of give them a hug with a with this bag saying, I can empathize with where you are, and um, I wish I could help you, but I, I can't, so I'm going to give you a quilt instead and honor your service. This feels more like direct help. It's just my opinion, and I've explained why I've come to that opinion. But if you do know a veteran or anybody with PTSD, an idea is to give them a travel spirograph for between 10 and $15 and see if it helps them process um, their PTSD thinking. And at the least, it makes them productive. If you have a homeless vet who is so terrified of everything that he's sitting in a tent somewhere and only comes out to go find food or or try to find a bed for the night or something like that, if, even if he or she sits in a tent all day and does this, they are then productive. And nobody can ever say that they're not. The travel spirograph just arrived, so I thought I would add this to the end of the video. Um, here's the box, as you can see. And it's a little bit bigger than the item itself. There's the spirograph. This is the pad it comes with, which is only 24 sheets, but it is a regular post-it note paper pad. And you can see that this has uh, teeth on it, and this is one of the rings that you would use to put the wheel on the inside. I've put a piece of paper in there, and to open this, you just push on the upper right hand corner and it opens up and there is the paper and with this come two short pens and these tips are different than the vintage set so that might mean that the holes on the shape pieces are larger and you can use uh, almost any pen instead of um, needing a narrow ballpoint as with the vintage set so you get your instruction book. Um, one, two, three, four of these are wheels. One is an elongated oval, and one is a cross shape. Now that I haven't used before, but obviously, um, and there is a one marked up here, so you would find the one on this, line it up, and then just go around. This one should be interesting. But as I was, as I've been saying in this video, this is I can even measure it because I have my ruler right here. Um, almost three and a half. Everything fits in the case, including the paper that I took out. So almost three and a half by about four and three quarters. Easily fit in someone's pocket. Great for kids. I wish I'd had this when um, my son was young for going in the car. Excellent for kids. But also, as I've been saying, the focus of this video 
um, for anyone with PTSD or veterans because I know it may seem like it's a child's toy. Here are two that I've done with this already. And if you have PTSD, this is a little bit more than doodling. And it's a little bit better than just doodling because there is a structure and you are productive. Now, if you use good paper, you can take this, um, a design like this, glue it to a card. You could make greeting cards. There are many things that you could do with the designs from this. But that's what it looks like, the travel spirograph. Uh, this one was about, I think it was 9.97 at Walmart. <laughs>